Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering Luminar 2018. In this Chapter 8 of Mastering Luminar 2018, we're going to replace a sky in an image. How often have you been on vacation and you have beautiful scenery, beautiful weather, but the sky is just blah, and you end up with pictures like this. Good scene, but the sky is really boring. And I want to replace the sky in this image. Now, it's very easy to do in Luminar. To begin with, just load your base image, like I have it here, into Luminar. Now, some people like to add filters to the base image right away. Personally, I don't like to do it right away because to sell the fake, you have to make sure that the, the quality of light and the color temperature of the light of your base image and your sky image match and make it look like it belongs there. And to me, to do any adjustments now is a waste of time. I'd rather have that sky image in there and then adjust both the base image and the sky image to match so the quality of light looks similar between the two different layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to immediately load in the sky image. And to do that, we're going to go up to the layers palette and we're going to click this little plus sign. Now we've done add new adjustment layer before, but for this, we're going to do add new image layer. And I have the sky uh, image on my desktop right there. So we're just going to open it and Luminar will open it up and place it on top of the base image or the base layer. Now, the cool thing about Luminar, it automatically will resize the image so it fits perfectly over the top of your original base image. Those of you that have done this in Photoshop know that you have to manually adjust the image sizes or the canvas sizes so that they are matching and it can be a challenge at times. It's a breeze with Luminar, it does it automatically. Now, we have to get this image onto the other image and right now it's just totally obscuring the other image. So what I like to do so I could see what I'm doing, I like to turn the opacity of the sky layer down. So I'm going to just click on this opacity slider and bring it down just enough so I could see the image underneath. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a gradient to this, a gradient mask, and it will allow the image below to show through. So, as we've done in the past, on this layer of the sky, we're going to click on this little brush. But instead of using the brush, we're going to go down to Gradient Mask. And when you do that, it's telling you to click and drag to draw a gradient. So just go up here in the sky somewhere and click with your left mouse button and drag down. And you can see we have this gradient started. It's kind of a typical gradient. <clears throat> Try to make it as straight as possible. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right in the middle on this little button and I'm going to move the entire gradient down to the, the line of the end of the ocean there. And make sure it's straight. Now if it's not perfectly straight, if you pull the cursor off the button to the left or to the right, you'll see you turn into that double arrow and then you could do some micro adjustments of, to make sure that it's perfectly straight. Now I'm going to pull it in on the bottom and the top as much as possible. That went a little too far. All right. Get that perfectly on there. I think like that looks pretty good. So we have that there. Now we're going to go up here to the top right hand corner and click this button that says done. Now I didn't do it that great. I don't think we have a little line there. I'm going to let that go. We'll see how it goes as we go. I probably should have pulled it down just a little more. But as you look at it, I mean, it doesn't look good at all. The image, when it was resized, the sky image, it kind of got stretched out. And you can see it it's, doesn't really fit the scene. So what we need to do is transform the sky image to better fit the scene. Now, to do that, make sure you're clicked on the sky layer. And we're going to use a tool. Click on your Tools button up here, and we're going to go to Free Transform. And this tool looks very much like the Crop tool, but this time you're not cropping the image. When I pull up from the bottom here, I'm actually kind of scrunching the image up, up 
to the top like that. Now it still kind of doesn't look right, but once I click done, you'll see that it kind of compressed the sky up into this upper portion. So I'm going to click done. And once it does that, you can see what it did. So we have a little white line there, but I think that looks okay. So now we have the sky in this image. Now, it doesn't really match. As I mentioned, we got to try to sell the fake. So now actually is the hard part. What we're going to do is we're going to add some filters to each of these layers to get it to look a little better. So I'm going to go to this bottom layer. This is the layer, obviously, with the water. And we're going to add a filter to this. So I'm going to click Add Filters. And I think what I want to do is just the Raw Develop filter. And I want to come in here and I want to cool it down. So I'm going to pull the temperature slider towards the left and the tint slider a little bit to the right. So I'll cool it off considerably. And then I'm going to reactivate the top layer by just clicking on it. So it's starting to look a little better. Now I want to do something to this top layer. And I, what I want to use, if I could find it relatively quickly, is this filter right here called Split color warmth. It's a very interesting filter. It's really just two sliders. And what you could do, you could make the warm tones warmer or cooler independently of the cool tones. In the cool tones, you could make either warmer or cooler. So I could take this warm slider and make the warm tones, warm tones warmer by moving it to the right or make them cooler by moving it to the left. I want to make those a little cooler. Similarly, I could take that cool slider move it to the right to make the cool tones warmer, or move it to the left to make them a little cooler. Now I wanna make them both a little cooler. So I'm making my cool tones a little cooler and my warm tones a little cooler. And you can see it's starting to look much better. So that is the filter I'm using for this top layer. And again, to refresh your memory on that bottom layer, I just put a raw develop filter there and I changed the color temperature so it was a little cooler. Now. I'd like to do a filter that affects the entire image, not just the top layer or the bottom layer. Now to do that, I need to kind of combine these layers into one layer. And that is super easy to do. And what I forgot to do is this opacity slider. I forgot to bring that up. Let's see if I bring that up. See, it doesn't look, I think it looks best right there. That's one thing I, I forgot to mention. You could come in here with this opacity slider and move it around to try to get it better match. So, sorry I forgot about that, but it looks pretty good right about there. Now, as I mentioned, we need to combine both of these layers into one layer. To do that, we're gonna click that plus sign again, and down here at the bottom is Create New Stamped Layer. And click on that, and what it will do, it will merge the two layers into one single layer and place that single layer on top of the existing layer stack. Okay, now it did it. Now to demonstrate that, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna get a black and white conversion filter and you can see it turned the entire image black and white. So now it's working on everything. Now I'm gonna get rid of that. I just wanted to show you that as a demonstration. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a Orton effect. I want this to be a little bit of a dreamy look. So. We're going to turn the amount up and let's see what type two looks like. I definitely like type one better for this image. It comes down to personal taste and turn softness up. I don't think brightness, I want to mess with that. And I think I want contrast up just a little bit. I think saturation is fine. So that again affected the entire image. Now we kind of got this dreamy kind of off color look. It doesn't look natural. It doesn't. Uh, you know, uh, have to look natural. It's kind of, you know, an artistic vision. So next, we're going to put our vignette to finish this off. And we're going to use the post crop vignette and bring it down like that. And a little bit of a center light. And maybe we'll bring the size down just a touch. So there it is. Now the before and after, we'll just hold the left mouse button in on this eyeball and there's before, our original image, and there's after with the sky and with all those different filters we applied to everything and we could do this also. 
So that's it. Um, if I took my time, I definitely could have done a better job. And for my own personal taste, I probably would have made it a little more realistic, not as dreamy looking, but I thought it was interesting to demonstrate the different filters that are available to you in Luminar. All right, that's it for chapter eight. And we have one more chapter to go. And in chapter nine, we're just going to tie up some loose ends. And I'm going to go over some things I didn't talk about yet and some things I forgot to talk about when, that I should have. So that's it for now. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.